welcome back to another video or if you're new here hi welcome to our channel happy to have you here in this video we will be transforming this walnut dressing table we managed to pick this up for free on gumtree it's beautiful it's got this stunning walnut bowl veneer but the only problem is a lot of it was in quite rough shape. There's a lot of scratches and dings and dents. We've got some awesome plans for this dressing table. It's gonna be two videos just because of how long the whole process took and how long one video would be. So in this first video, we'll deal mainly with the dressing table body. And then in the second video, we will deal with the drawers and what we did with them. So stay tuned and join us as we transform this dressing table. So we're just going over it, having a look, seeing what damage there is, what repairs we need to do, what we can save, what we can't. The drawer fronts, although they look okay in the video, they were actually quite damaged. The veneer beneath was quite scratched and chipped away. So when we were inspecting it, we knew that the drawer fronts weren't going to be salvageable and look nice. I mean, we could have just refinished them, but they wouldn't have looked amazing. Yeah, the plan was not to keep the drawer fronts as they were, but to keep the uh, top of the dressing table because that veneer was in really good shape. So we removed the hardware from the drawers as you can see the dirt and the grime underneath the drawers which is why you should always remove your hardware before cleaning because there's generally especially with vintage pieces of furniture so much dust and grime that gets caught underneath the handles things like that here we're just using a grime cutter which is really good at getting rid of the grime obviously as it says and some water and a cloth and giving the dressing table a really good clean. There was so much dust in this dressing table. This is must be nearly an antique piece of furniture but there was decades of dust inside those drawers. Just look at that water how dirty it is and we gave it another clean after this before we went in with um, just some plain water, washed it all down, made sure we got all the grime cutter residue off, any sort of last bits of dirt and dust. Um, you do need to make sure you go over everything with some water so that you've got a real nice clean surface to start working on. If you look at these dovetail joints, um, I'm not sure what period of time they're from, but um, I think that these particular style of joins are quite old. Um, they're the earlier version of a dovetail join. Here you can see the damage on the veneer that I was talking about earlier. There's lots of cracks and at the edges it's really rough. Um, see and looking at it I just don't think it's going to be worthwhile to try and repair. I'm going to use chemical stripper on the top of the dressing table now. I'm using one called Paint Panther. It's a brand that's available here in the UK and it, it's really good. It strips um, all the surfaces we've used it on in, in literally 10-15 minutes. Um, we, we really like using this one as much as you can like using a chemical stripper. Yeah, make sure you wear your gloves 
and a respirator mask because of the fumes and then just using a cheap chip brush to spread that around over the surface of the dressing table Once we've left that for 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how the finish is reacting and how quickly it, it's sort of coming away, um, we'll then take a metal scraper. You could use a plastic one as well if you're worried about scratching the surface. Uh, but generally we found if you're applying pressure to the back of the scraper and keeping it angled quite low down to the surface, you generally don't get scratches and as you can see it, it's coming away really easily um, just collecting all the stripper in a container so that we can take it to our local waste center to be disposed of you can't uh, wash chemical stripper down the sink and it causes so much damage to the environment and to the um, water so just make sure that you are disposing of it properly um, at your local uh, waste centres. And there you can see how it's looking now that it's had that thick coat of varnish. Most of that cracking has gone um, and yeah, getting really excited now about how this is going to look once it's refinished. You can sort of start to see where it's going to go. Here I'm just using some uh, white spirit and a fine grade steel wool. This is to remove any of the stripper that may be left on the dressing table and also to stop the chemical reaction. So just generously pour the white spirits over the surface get that fine steel wool and just rub it around because it's the fine steel wool it won't scratch the surface of your furniture um, but yeah do to make sure to sort of rub it in well so that you are taking away what's left of the stripper and also stopping any chemical reaction from continuing Now that I've gone through the process of stripping the entire dressing table with that chemical stripper, I'm now going in with a um, fine sanding pad. The reason I'm using a fine sanding pad is that the veneer on top, the walnut bowl veneer on top here, is really thin. And so I want to be super careful that I don't blow through any of that veneer. So I'm just starting with that fine grit sanding pad and seeing how that gets me on. And here is the perfect reason why you should wear a respirator. All that dust that gets kicked up when you're sanding that you might not even see but is is in the air and then going in with some super fine 400 grit sandpaper and going over the top with that just to make it buttery smooth and for once we had a really lovely sunny day so um took the dressing table outside to give it a good wipe down it was coated in dust so i wanted to make sure that it got a really good wash down and here i am prepping to paint 
the body of the dressing table. I know that I'm going to refinish the top so I need to protect that from the paint. So I'm just using some brown paper and some masking tape and taping that off to protect it. For primer I'm using the Zinzibin 123 which was really good because it um, sealed in all the tannins on the wood so they didn't bleed through on the paint and I think I gave it two coats of primer and lightly sanded between the coats of primer just to smooth it out. The paint that I used for the body of the dresser was a shade called Emerald City from Annabelle Duke Paints, which is here in the UK. I mean, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous green teal colour. It's really lovely. So I went in with, I think it was two, three coats in the end, um, two with touch ups probably. It's painting things like dressing tables where I kind of really wish we had room for a, a paint sprayer. Unfortunately in the workshop we've got now, although we do have a paint sprayer, it just isn't big enough or ventilated well enough for us to use a sprayer. So in between each of the coats of paint I used a fine grit sanding pad just to go over it, smooth things out before I wiped it down and gave it the next coat of paint. I really like the Annabelle Duke paint range. It has really good coverage and um, the finish on it is really lovely. It levels out nicely. just a really nice paint to work with. And here's Stu's getting involved with the painting. He's getting a coat on. Not, not like a literal coat, but like a coat of paint. Obviously. And then to seal in the body of the dressing table I used um, the clear wax first and then buff that out and then use some dark wax just to add some dimension to the paint and to the details on the dresser and it kind of just added some shadowing which was 
yeah, it turned out really nicely. The clear furniture wax I used was from Rust-Oleum and the black furniture wax I believe was an Annie Sloan one. And this wax brush is just um, one I got off Amazon. Uh, I'll make sure that the products that I used in this video are linked in the description box below if you want to go have a look and and buy anything for yourself. They are affiliate links, which means, well, most of them are, which means I'll get a small commission. It doesn't cost you any more, um, but it just helps out. Every little helps, as they say. Then once I'd finished putting on the black wax, I buffed that off just with this little buffing pad that we had. Uh, so I, I don't know if you can see where it's just, it's added, a, that black wax is sort of settled in the, in the furniture and say it adds just like a bit of, a bit of dimension, a bit of, it just darkens a little bit. To refinish the top, I used Osmo Pollock Soil. Um, it's a hard oil, or hard wax oil, I should say. Um, I absolutely love this stuff. I mean, immediately you can see the difference it makes. Um, I normally apply two to three coats of this um, in, in thin coats and waiting probably about 12 hours between 12 hours to a day between each coat just to let it dry thoroughly. It just makes the wood look magnificent. Please like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or you found it at all useful. As I say, the second part of this video will be coming up which will be dealing with the drawers and how we decoupage them. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you on the next video. Bye!